feel the urge, the urge to analyze. Okay, this is where I get to peruse other people's Goodreads pages, analyze the books they've read, and recommend a book I think will be perfect for them. Today we're going to start with The Little Book Owl. I know a lot of you subscribe to her booktube channel. She's from Australia and Goodreads lists her as the Australian with the most followers this month, beating out freaking Marcus Zusak. You know, the guy who wrote The Book Thief? That's pretty impressive. Anyway, she lists her favorite genres as young adult, dystopian, fantasy, science fiction, and contemporary. She's rated 197 books with an average rating of 4.2. She loved the host. She says she wanted to just pick it right back up and read it again, which is pretty much how I felt about it. She loved the graveyard book for the gorgeous characters and the bittersweet ending. She adored Cinder, calling it one of her favorite books of all time. Other books she loved were The Darkest Minds, The Book Thief, the Night Circus, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, The Fault in Our Stars, and The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. She did not like Shiver by Maggie Stiefvater, saying that it was pretty slow. I have to agree, Shiver wasn't really my favorite, and in no way did it foreshadow the brilliance that would be the Raven Boys. Perhaps Maggie just needed to work on her writing skills? Little Book Owl rated Incarceron the same as I did with 3 out of 5. She doesn't say why. But I know for myself it was because while I loved the world building, the character building was weak, so I really didn't care enough about them personally to really get invested. So, the little book owl obviously loves YA and fantasy, but she's not a sucker for any old story. No, it's gotta be well written. She's also not afraid of books with deep emotions like The Fault in Our Stars or The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. With all that in mind, I'm going to recommend a book I've read several times and still think it's brilliant every single time I read it. That is... Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. One of my favorite things about this author is that it's so dang difficult to categorize his books. They are what they are, and they really defy conventional genre pigeonholing. This book starts out like an English boarding school book and then turns into something much deeper and much darker and so much more, I don't know, Doctor Who-ish? Is that a descriptor? It should be. Anyway, I hope the little book Al checks it out and enjoys it as much as I did. Next up, let's analyze Sarah, also known as Books and Flicks. She's from Germany, and she's a Goodreads librarian, which is pretty impressive. <laughs> well, at least it impresses those of us on BookTube. On her YouTube channel, she talks about just what you would think from a title like Books and Flicks, which is about the books and movies she's partaken in recently. She lists her favorite genres as YA, fantasy, classics, and historical fiction. She's rated 429 books with an average rating of 3.74, which should give me a good range to analyze. She loved A Discovery of Witches because of the main female lead and also that wonderful Oxford library setting. She loved Coraline, but did wonder if it might be too scary for kids. She really liked Fahrenheit 451, saying it was full of truths. She really liked Pippi Longstocking. I'm really just mentioning that because I so wanted to be Pippi Longstocking as a kid. Other books she really likes are Stormfront, To Kill a Mockingbird, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, The Fault in Our Stars, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, Water for Elephants, and Speaker for the Dead. She was ambivalent about Legion, calling the first half boring, but the second half good. She disliked Dead Until Dark, which is a book about a girl who is turned into a vampire, but she's a girl who only thinks about shopping and pretty much nothing else, so I personally couldn't really relate to the character. She disliked Obsidian and hated Lolita. So I thought long and hard about this one, debating whether to go philosophical treaties or maybe coming of age. But instead, I decided on a book that will appeal to her sense of whimsy and love of a more classical style of writing. Plus, she can read the book and then watch the movie and review both on her channel. And that book is Chocolat by Joanne Harris. The movie stars Johnny Depp and is quite good. I read the book because of the movie. The book is different, but just as magical. It's about a woman in France who opens a chocolate shop right before Lent. So Sarah, check it out and let me know what you think of both the movie and the book. All right, that's all for today. I will be back soon with more analysis. Let me know if you haven't already been added to my list of people to pick apart.